Platonic love is a concept which has found lot of admirers in space as well as time. That is, it has been appreciated over a long period of time in its place of origin, that is, the Western or European traditions, as well as there have been ardent admirers of the concept in places beyond the West, India for example. And here it has found favor because due to certain things in the medieval age and in the Victorian colonialism, Indian uh, sexuality has been to a great extent uh, sort of repressed culturally if not physically and uh, platonic love is something which has found favor with lot of Indians because the very meaning of the term as we understand it is non-physical love. There will be love between two persons. Uh, uh, remember, not between man and woman because platonic love is spoken about persons. But then there won't be any physicality. At least that is our understanding of platonic love. Often, if we want, want to idealize some love relation that a, uh, that a great person in our culture or history has had, we say that no, it was platonic. However, this is actually a misunderstanding of platonic love. That is what my point is today. Uh, platonic love is not non-physical love. It is physical and beyond physical. You cannot go beyond the physical by ignoring the physical. That is what Plato meant. The thing is discussed in details in a book called Symposium, which is dated approximately say between 385 BC to 370 BC. In that, we, we get to read about a banquet where uh, great people, noblemen had gathered to give speech and uh, honor, uh, speech in honor of brother, the god of love Eros, E-R-O-S, Eros. It is like, uh, I mean the god is like our uh, Kamdev that is modern Kamdev etc. In Guwahati still there is a temple of modern Kamdev which is in ruins mostly uh, but then it is there and uh, it was believed that at one point of time modern Utsav or Vasad Utsav that is celebration of this Eros in the Indian form was very widespread. Uh, we have references to it in ancient texts and the Basant Panchami in which we worship Saraswati Puja is actually a, a, a change, I mean a transition in that Vashanta Utsav. In fact, except Eastern India, Vashanta Utsav or Vashanta Panchami, rather Vashanta Panchami is celebrated also as modern Panchami and then Krishna's one holy. This is not the main holy but one holy but in eastern India it is uh, devoted to Saraswati whereas in other parts of India Saraswati is worshipped on the Navami day of Durga Puja mainly. So anyway and then uh, the concept or tantric conceptualization of Saraswati is also not devoid from Eros. So because uh, speech and desire they are intimately related. Anyway, on that I will speak on another occasion, but let us come back to platonic love. So people give speeches and then there they celebrate Eros as not only love in itself or physicality in itself, but something which gives one courage, valor, you know, good qualities. As we say, when people are truly in love, they improve themselves, which is a positive thing. And then eventually one can transcend death also. Actually death cannot be transcended but the fear of death is transcended. So even we say, find it in the very popular Bollywood number, Pear Kya To Darna Kya. Anyway, so that feeling is there in Bollywood film but the philosophy has already been provided in the symposium by, by Plato. Yeah, of course, in the he uses other characters like Socrates, Aristophanes, then Elsevier, all who come there and talk. It is a fictional dialogue. 
बट हु नोज दिस थिंग मे हैव टेकन प्लेस दिस एक्चुअल डायलॉग इन कॉन्वर्सेशन इन रियल लाइफ बिकॉज प्लेटो वॉज अ क्लोज डिसाइपल ऑफ सॉक्रेटिस दैट डज इट बैटर वॉट बैटर इज द फलासफी दैट वी आर गेटिंग सो इन दैट इट इज सेट आई मीन सॉक्रेटिस सेट दैट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस जेनरल सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ लव सॉक्रेटिस गिवस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ यू नो दिस लव शी से आई मीन ही सेज in sections 210 to 220 to and 12 socrates recounts you know a doctrine about eros or love that he had received from a wise woman called diotima so diotima had told socrates not to linger in the love which is generated by physical beauty or beauty in a single human body but this has to be used as a stair means the first love or physical love in a human body is the you know lowest step of the stair and then using uh, that as a not as an end but as a beginning gradually and slowly you have to rise up and then extend that love to all human uh, bodies and then beyond humanity to the universe and that way you will uh, make it metaphysical rather than physical so that way i mean it is not that physicality is not there but physicality is the first step beginning step so we have similar concepts in india but in india this concepts uh, became more prominent during you know the middle ages especially in vaishnavait literature we have uh, you know detailed uh, definition of krishna prem in the biographies of chaitanya mahaprabhu as utterly non physical we do not know whether there had been influences from plato or vice versa uh, we are not sure because there had been many negotiations and exchanges beyond that we get in uh, official or recorded history and then there she says that i mean diotima told plato sorry socrates that you have to finally concentrate on the idea idea of purity idea of soul of which the bodily beauty is only an external manifestation as you know i have told in other places that plato was basically an idealist so diotima says that like from one going on to two and from two to all fair forms so basically you will start loving all fair forms beginning from your love of one physical form and then gradually we'll go back and treat this physical form as an attribute of the soul that resides inside the human form bodily beauty is just an external manifestation of the beauty of the soul and then going still backward the beauty of the soul is basically the beauty of the absolute that is the supreme or divine very interestingly in the discourses of plato or socrates the absolute is often impersonal like the brahman of vedanta but with positive qualities of course brahman is also given positive qualities uh, during the renaissance what happened is that the christian theologists combine this idea of the beauty of the absolute which is more abstract with the beauty of the personal god christ's father or god the father jehova actually these two are different you know just as brahman of vedanta and uh, is impersonal and vishnu and shiva etc of the puranas respective puranas are more personal the impersonal a uh, absolute of plato socrates etc and the christian god jehova of the bible are very very different even more different than the indian examples that i have given one has to remember that the christian god is a personal god you know he has name even form and attributes which is clear from the fact that uh, you know the bible it is written god created man in his own image it is another matter that they do not worship images but if you go to medieval and pre medieval painting god the father is adequately painted with beard and all along with christ only the holy ghost is often painted as a dove so it is a personal god no doubt if you read the bible it will be very clear it is not the impersonal uh, you know supreme of the vedanta or 
you know greco roman uh, you know higher philosophy you can say anyway they combined this two so in that way a religious dimension was added to uh, what we now can legitimately call platonic love because plato gives us in its symposium anyway so to repeat the idea physical love is very important so but then first uh, that love has to happen and then this love from uh, there will be two kinds of if i may use the analogy two kinds of extension one is horizontal extension from one body to many bodies of course this is i mean plato does not mean to say that you will be physically in love with all bodies but you will love the form beauty in other forms other physical forms human forms basically this is i can call the horizontal expansion of love and then one is vertical that is in that single human body from his love of his form he will go back to the love of his soul and then from that soul to the super soul now you may ask me that is why why i am using his why not her well the thing is that the love that plato discusses as platonic love is basically between men or a man and a boy which have been extended to you know men women love to such an extent in hindi movies and all that most people do not even know now uh, even if they may know that plato's platonic love is not so much non physical but they have no idea that plato was speaking about love between men or among men basically not men and women so to highlight this to also you know i presented this idea of platonic love i hope you find it interesting please let us know your observation through comments thank you